Go. today to give you a tour of my 2017 Subaru Outback and how I trade it from my daily driver into an awesome camping adventure vehicle on the weekends. You don't need to go out and buy an expensive RV. You can use what you already have and have a really comfortable, safe, and fun place to camp out of. And I'm going to show you all the small little tweaks that you can do to make this an awesome space to live in for weekend adventures or cross country. So Cool Whip and I are going to give you a tour starting right now. All right, so before we really get started, I want to talk about just a couple of the advantages of camping in your car versus camping in a tent. So I love the safety first and foremost of camping in your car because you do have solid walls. So it means that you're not going to worry as much about like people breaking into your tent or anything like that because you're in a hard bodied car. The other reason I like it is there's very minimal setup. So all I need to do is move my stuff from the back to the front seat and I am pretty much ready to camp. And finally, I hate dealing with wet tents and wet camping stuff. So I don't have to fold down a wet tent in the rain and then put it in my car and then everything's wet. If it's raining, I'm just dry in my car. You know, it's awesome for those like Friday night, you get there, it's already dark, nothing to set up, open the hatch, throw your stuff in the front seat and you're you're ready to camp. So there's a lot of benefits for camping in a car and I highly prefer it to sleeping in a tent. Some of the cons of sleeping in your car are that there is minimal headroom. So this is a 2017 Subaru Outback. There's not a lot of headroom. If I did want to do a build so that I could have some storage underneath, I would lose a ton of headroom um, and probably not be able to change in my car like I do now. So you are limited in your headroom. Um, also, ventilation can be a problem, but stay tuned. I'm going to show you all the ways that I make it really comfortable and cool in this, in this car. So all right, without further ado, let's get started on the tour. All right, so let's get started with this item right here. This is a dog, and I highly recommend you get one and take it on adventures with you. They provide great companionship, awesome hiking buddy, first alarm system at your campsite, as well as they'll keep you warm whether you want to or not on a summer's night. So highly recommend picking one up. They load themselves. Really good camping companion. All right, she doesn't seem amused with my joke, so I guess we will get started with the actual tour. All right, so we'll start here with the bed. This is probably the most important thing. If you put nothing else in your car, putting some sort of bedding is going to be really helpful in keeping you feeling good and having a good restful night's sleep in your car. So I have under here, let's see if I can, okay, this is an x -ped. Uh, Matt, I will put the details of it and the dimensions down below because I don't have them off the top of my head. Um, but it is the smallest X-Ped that you could pretty much get. Um, and it's about four inches in height. It is an air self-inflating mattress, but it's really thick. I've slept on one of these for almost a month in my sister's apartment at one point, And it just sleeps really nicely. You know, it's definitely an investment, but it's a really nice one. No issues with the dogs popping it or anything like that. It's really well built. So I recommend starting with that X-Ped mat. Um, you can get the larger one so that it fits the entire space, but I like having some of the space empty for me to put things when I need to. Uh, on top of that, I have some old sheets from college that do not fit the X-Ped, but are free because we already own them. So that works out. And then on top of that, I have a rumple blanket big fan of rumple blankets. They seem to do well at any temperature. I've slept in low teens with just a couple rumple blankets, but they're also not too hot for summer. Uh, they don't collect dog hair. <laughs> so if you have a dog, they just shake right out, which I love, and they come in a bunch of different sizes. All right, moving on. Once you've put your bed in, you're ready to sleep pretty much. All of the rest are going to be creature comforts that make the experience of sleeping in a car much more enjoyable. 
So let's start here with my power source. Since it's here, uh, I use a Jackery. I've also used a Goal Zero, both work. All I have to do is plug my stuff in, turn it on, and then it'll start charging whatever I need charged. This is the, the system that also runs my fridge. I did not bring my fridge on this trip because I didn't really need it. I just bought, brought a tiny cooler um, and I really recommend having some sort of power source to charge your stuff. So that's easy peasy and you can charge it while you are driving or you can plug it into a wall before you go out for the weekend and it has plenty of power for the weekend. It charged both my phones uh, my phone and my watch overnight and it's still at 98 percent power moving on i want to show you the windows next because the windows are really cool and one of my favorite features when car camping all right so there's a couple things going on with these windows the first is i have these bug nets going over them. I'll link that in the down below too because I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I'll link everything down below so that you can find it for camping. But these were cheap bug nets that I got on Amazon and it makes it so that you can leave the windows totally open, get a nice cross breeze across the vehicle without getting any bugs inside. Love them. Underneath, you may be wondering what the heck is underneath them. Let me pull them off. They're super easy. Okay, this is a breeze guard. So you can see that there's the window is down here, that this is totally open. Breeze guards are something that I use to keep dogs in and people out. Now they're not gonna keep someone who wants to pry it open from getting into the vehicle, but they do provide a barrier. Um, I used to have police bars on my Ram truck and I loved that for being able to keep the windows open for the dogs. They don't make police bars for Subarus, so this is the next best thing. It is screwed directly into the frame. I had that done, um, so it makes it relatively secure. Also awesome for keeping the windows open when you're driving with your dog um, so that they don't stick their head out and get stuff in their eyes. So these products are pretty cool. Uh, I'll link them down below. And then I love the combo of both the security at night with the breeze guards, and then you put the bug screens down. There you go and you're good to go and have nice ventilated area to sleep in. All right, so next I wanna show you the lighting. So these are Lucy lights made by Empowered and I love them. They're string lights and they're solar charged. So I just throw them up on the windshield over here while I'm driving, charges them right up, and then I loop them through all the different uh, spots that I can on uh, the Subaru and I have really nice light. It lasts forever. It's LED and it also has a little flashlight on it as well. So really nice for lighting up the inside. So this light is also by Lucy and it is also solar charged. Throw that up on the windshield, charge it right up, and then you can have fun party lights in your van. I like this for being able to um, go to the bathroom at night, just have something, and it collapses right down. So this is just blown up and then when you're not Using it, it collapses and uh, stores away nice and small, which I like. The next thing is this Ryobi fan. So I find these pretty invaluable, not just for camping, but also for dog sports and life. Um, it is powered by a drill battery and it's got two different levels. So like super strong and low. This was running all night and I still have battery left. Let's see how much. So I still have half the battery left after running it all night, keeping myself cool because it was 80 something yesterday. So Ryobi fan, you can move it anywhere. You can hang it on a dog crate. So if you're a dog person and watching this, hang these on the dog crates, keep the air moving. Love it for that. And again, it just runs off a drill battery. So you can grab a couple drill batteries. You're good to go. Or you can plug it in directly to the Jackery as a way to power it. So super versatile, can move it everywhere love this thing for everything so now i'll show you the messy part of the van so this is my passenger seat this is where i store all my stuff now i am a big fan of putting everything in a bucket or a container of some sort so when i need to throw it or move it around it's easy to do um so i have my clothes in the backpack my toiletries this is my um cooler for the weekend um again i didn't bring my fridge freezer which uh 
I'm missing it a little bit, but this works for a quick weekend. Um, you can also see over here that I have this bin. This is my catch-all, but I always want to have like crates or bins to move everything around because this stuff does have to go from the back to the front. And I'm going to show you my setup for driving as well because I do use a crate and you haven't seen a crate in a car yet, but let's finish down here first. Getting windy. All right, so I also have this WeatherTech um, front windshield winery thing. Um, everyone has seen these. It's just a thing that covers your front windshield. I use that for sleeping at night. Um, you may notice that I don't have shades up over all of the windows. That's because I do camp mostly in designated camping areas, so I'm not really worried about covering up uh, my windows, but if I needed to, I do make Reflectix, and I was thinking of making some Reflectix at least for the back part of this um, the Outback, and I have some left over from my van project. I will link up here here. I'm not exactly sure where it would be. The video of how to make um, pretty Reflectix window covers that are super cheap to make. Um, so I will put that video somewhere so that you can find it. One more thing I wanted to point out is this empty seat. So for safety reasons, I never put anything in my front seat. So if for some reason I need to jet in the middle of the night, there's no cleaning up to do. Like if I just need to leave everything and go, I just go from the back, crawl through to the front seat. I hang my keys up on the little thing up there and then I'm ready to go in an emergency. So I always keep this front seat clear for safety reasons. So let me show you the top of the Subaru. I call it the hat, but the thing that I have on top of my Subaru, it's by Rolla. Um, it's just a cargo carrier and you'll notice there's a weird thing up there. That is my collapsible crate. So I am a big proponent of crating your dog while driving. It keeps them safe. It also makes them not a projectile in the event of an accident. And finally, if your dog is dirty and wet from swimming all day camping, you can put them in the crate instead of putting them all over your bedding. Because when you're camping in a car, there's a space is at a premium and so you just have the bed pretty much in there if you throw your wet dog in there then you have a wet bed which is uh not great so i what i do is i take this collapsible crate by impact crate i use it for the drive insert picture of me using it before <laughs> We take everything out to camp in. Uh, and then I collapse it and put it up on top of the car uh, when I'm not using it. And then when I leave for the weekend, I can pull it down, set it back up, and then Cool Whip has a good spot to uh, travel in while I'm driving to keep her safe. So finally, I'll show you the back of the vehicle here. Um, I have this like thing I picked up on Amazon. I don't know what you call it, camping mat of some sort, but it basically keeps the ground, like it makes it so I can put stuff on the ground without it becoming filthy from the dirt, which I really like, and the dogs can relax on it as well. Uh, water bowl, and then I wanna just show you how I tie the dog uh, to the car. So I have this thing here, it's called a tether. I need to do a video on tethers because they're my favorite. But basically it's metal wrapped in plastic leash kind of thing that I can just attach to the uh, tailgate thingy here. And then I can attach anything I want. So any length of biothane line, which is what I usually use, I can attach two dogs, but it makes for a really nice setup and it keeps them away from the fire uh, if I do have the fire going. All right, everyone, that's the whole tour. Not very long, because not a ton of space in a car, but you can do this. You don't need to wait to get be able to buy an RV or wait for a friend to be able to go camping. You can turn your, your small SUV into a really comfortable place to camp for the weekend. So if you have any questions, make sure you put them down below. If you have any recommendations for vehicles that you love to camp in, I would love to hear about it. I will be looking for another vehicle potentially with slightly more space in the future um, so that my husband and I and the two dogs could comfortably fit in the back of the vehicle. So if you have options or ideas, uh, put them down in the comments below for me. If you have uh, any questions or suggestions, do that as well. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it. It helps other people find the channel. And if you are interested in learning more about how to train your dog, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash When you sign up, not only do you support this channel and the, the videos that we make here, you also get access to training tips, videos, live monthly Q&A, and a community of people who are interested in traveling, playing, and training with their dog. You guys have an awesome weekend. Happy travels. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe now and never miss an episode.